Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 12 on the Exterior Angles of a Triangle. So, this is probably the first time you've ever even heard the term exterior angle, right? When you look at things like triangles or quadrilaterals, which are rectangles, squares, parallelograms, things like that, you're very familiar with the angles on the inside of the figure. But today we're going to actually look at the idea of an angle being on the outside of a figure, which we're going to call an exterior angle. So let's jump into the first exercise where we actually look at exterior angles and how we can calculate their measures. It's pretty easy, but let's get into it. Here we go. Exercise number one. Triangle ABC is shown below. We will be constructing the exterior angles to it, starting with the exterior angle at vertex C. To construct the exterior angle at C, extend side AC through point C to point D, then write the measure of angle BCD. All right, so here we go, right? I'm trying to figure out or trying to picture the external or exterior angle at point C. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take side AC and I'm just gonna extend it, I'm gonna make it longer. Now I should do this with a straight edge, but I'm gonna just kinda do it by hand. I'm just gonna extend it and I'm gonna mark its end point D. How far should I extend it? It doesn't matter, right? Where should I put D on it? It doesn't matter, right? All I need to have is I need to have this line segment extended out, and now, of course, I wanna know the measure of angle B, C, D. Well, that's actually pretty easy to do because I know that this entire angle must sum to 180 degrees, and therefore, BCD must be 180 degrees minus that 30 degree angle. So BCD must have a measure of 150 degrees. And that's it. That's the whole deal. Now, as a little aside, you might wonder, why did I extend side AC and not side BC, right? So I could have also extended this and created this angle, this external angle here, right? Except that exterior angle, the one that's right here on the outside would also have a measure of 150 degrees. So the answer is it really didn't matter. I could have extended side AC to point D like I did and then the exterior angle was 150 degrees or I could have taken BC and extended it down here and then this angle would have also been 150 degrees. The point is the exterior angle from that point C ends up being 150. Now let's draw the exterior angles at the other two vertices as well, all right? Let's do one more together and then have you do the last one on your own. For letter B, it tells us to construct the exterior angle at B by extending side CB through B to point E. Label E, then write the measure of angle ABE. All right, so again, easy enough. All we're doing is taking side CB, extending it out further. Whoops, hopefully the pen will work. Extending it out further. I'm just labeling this point E so that I can then figure out that this angle, right, is simply going to be 180 degrees minus that 100 degree angle. There's 100 degrees. And so that's got to be an 80 degree angle. I'm just gonna erase all of this so that we've only got that one exterior angle here. And again, let's just write its measure up on the picture as well. This angle will be 150 degrees. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and do letter C. In other words, construct the exterior angle at vertex A. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so this time it asks us to take side BA, extend it through point A to point E, then label, or sorry, to point F, and then label it and find the measure of CAF. All right, simple enough. We extend side BA out here to F, right? We want the measure of this angle. It's easy enough. It's going to be 180 degrees minus that 50 degrees, and that's going to be 130 degrees. All right. So it's very, very easy to create exterior angles. And of course, it's very easy to find their measures if we know the interior angle that's adjacent to it. That's an important term, adjacent. Adjacent means right next to or touching. 
So these two angles are right next to each other. They're adjacent angles. And we saw that term earlier on in Math 8. And of course, they're supplementary, right? These two angles add to 180. These two angles add to 180. And these two do. And that's because we're extending the sides of the triangles to create those exterior angles. We can do that with any kind of a figure. Today, we're just going to concentrate on triangles. Now, one last piece of this problem, letter D, asks us, what is the sum of the three exterior angles you found? In other words, we had an exterior angle of 150, an 80, and a 130. I want to know what those three add up to. And you're welcome to do this on your calculator or by hand or whatnot, but why don't you go ahead and take a moment and figure out what that sum is. All right, well, that's just calculator work or longhand work. We're not going to go through that ourselves. But what we do find is that the measure is 360. All right, simple enough. Now, I will say that 360, that's a nice, nice number, right? It's twice 180, and we know that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180. You know, maybe that 360 has something to do with that. But let's play around with this a little bit more. Let's take a look at another exercise that involves exterior angles. All right, exercise number two. The angles of triangle EFG have been marked. Extend each side and find the measures of the exterior angles. All right, easy enough. So what I want you to do is go through the procedure that we did last time, extend each one of these sides from each one of the vertices, and then write in the measures of each of those angles. I tried to keep the angles actually in this triangle nice so that it'll be easy when you do the subtraction from 180. But go ahead and draw on all the exterior angles and label their measures on the diagram. Go ahead and do that. All right, now again, it doesn't particularly matter which side you extend to create these exterior angles. But I'm going to kind of keep with what we did before. I'm going to extend this side. I'm not going to even give it a, a letter name, but I can say that that's 130 degrees because I know that 180 minus 50 is 130. I can extend this side, and that means that that's going to be a 120 degree angle. I am just having problems writing twos today. I don't know why. Let me try that again. A 100, still no. The twos are being annoying, 120 degree angle, because again, 180 minus 60, 120. And then I can find that this is a 110 degree angle. All right, so I simply extend the lines, then I simply do 180 minus each of these to get me the exterior angle measures. Letter B, just like before, asks us to find the sum of the exterior angles. So I'd like to know what 120 degrees plus 110 degrees plus 130 degrees, what that sum is equal to. So take a moment, use your calculators, do it by hand, I don't care, figure out that sum. Take a moment. All right, well, if I add them all up, what I find is the sum is equal to 360 degrees. Which makes the answer to letter C pretty easy unless you have an extremely short-term memory, right? Letter C, your, is the sum the same that you found in exercise 1 letter D? And the answer is yes. One of the amazingly remarkable things is that it's always 360 degrees. Just as the sum of the angles of a triangle are always 180 degrees, the sum of the exterior angles of a triangle is always 360 degrees. Always. On top of that, by the way, it's any polygon. The sum of the exterior angles of any triangle or any figure at all. It's amazing. You could take an octagon, um, a rectangle, a parallelogram, it wouldn't matter, a pentagon. Draw on those, extend those sides, put in the exterior angles, add them all up, they will always be 360 degrees. It's really a remarkable fact about geometry. And we saw those in the two diagrams. This was the one from letter A, that's the one from number one and number two, and what we saw in both cases was the angles summed to 360. Just a really kind of cool phenomenon. It doesn't get used nearly as much as the fact that the sum of the angles of a triangle, the interior angles, are equal to 180, but it's still an interesting fact about the exterior angles. We're going to look at another important fact about exterior angles, though, in exercise 3. So let's take a look. In the diagram below, triangle ABC from exercise number 1, along with exterior angles, is drawn. 
For every exterior angle, there are two interior angles that are not adjacent to it. These are known as remote interior angles. Letter A, what are the measures of the two remote interior angles to the exterior angle BCD? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of terminology in this. Okay, let's just talk about that before we kind of get into letter A and answer it. Right? If I take a look at angle BCD, that 150 degree angle, there are three interior angles. One of them, the 30, is adjacent to the 150. The other two are what are called remote interior. They are not touching the 150. So for the BCD, the two remote interior angles are the 100 degree angle and the 50 degree angle. So 100, 100 degrees and 50 degrees, right? This angle and this angle are the remote interior angles to that one. Now, letter B asks us, how does the sum of the two angles from A compare to the measure of angle BCD? Well, this should be fairly obvious. When I add these two angles together, how does that compare to the measure of that exterior angle? Take a moment, try to answer this. Well, clearly, the sum of these two just equals that one, right? Now, maybe that's just because that's just what I did. In other words, maybe I created an example where that just simply works out. So, the sum equals the exterior angle, right? But letter C then asks us to verify that this relationship holds for the other two exterior angles. So let, let's kind of like take a look at that together. So we've already looked at it for the 150 degree angle and that's equal to 50 plus 100, right? Let's take a look at this 80 degree angle. Right, that 80 degree angle has these two angles that are remote interior angles, right? And if we look at them, obviously, the 50 degree angle plus the 30 degree angle is equal to that 80 degree angle. So that relationship still holds, meaning that the exterior angle is the sum of the two interior angles that don't touch it, that are remote from it. We can look at it as well with the final exterior angle, and we can take a really long time to erase the ink that's up here. Our last interior angle is that 130 degree angle. There are the two remote interior angles, here and here, and what we see is again that relationship holds. 100 degrees plus 30 degrees is 130 degrees. And so that's the other really kind of interesting thing about exterior angles, right? There are two main properties of exterior angles. One, the sum of all the exterior angles is gonna be 360 degrees, regardless of whether it's a triangle or anything else. But for triangles alone, the measure of any given exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the measures of its two remote interior angles. Really, really nice fact. And let's kind of play around with that in exercise number four. Let me bring it up to the top of the screen. Here we go, exercise number four. In the diagram below, side NP of triangle MNP has been extended from P to point Q. It is known that the measure of angle MPQ is 148 degrees, and the measure of angle N is equal to 76 degrees. Find the measure of angle M in two ways, letter A, by using facts about exterior angles and remote interior angles, and letter B, by first finding the measure of angle MPN, and then using the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. All right, so let's make sure that we get into this. Right, here's the plain fact, right? We know, based on the work that we just, just did, that this angle should be equal to the sum of this angle and the sum of that angle, right? So angle M plus angle N should be equal to that remote exterior, or sorry, to, it should be equal to that exterior angle. So if I want the measure of angle M, I can simply say that that's 148 degrees, I'm not getting my four to come out, 148 degrees minus that 76 degrees, right? M plus N must be equal to this exterior angle. 
So I can take that exterior angle measurement, just subtract off the 76 and boom, I get 72. But let's say for a moment that we hadn't gone over that, that we hadn't talked about the fact that the exterior angle was the sum of these two remote interiors. There would of course be another way to do it. Another way to do this problem would be to say, okay, I know that these three angles, NM and NPM, this guy down here, must add to 180. So I could first figure out what this angle is, right? That's easy enough. Let me figure out the measure of angle MPN. That's going to be just 180 degrees minus 148 degrees. There we go big degree symbol, that's okay. That's going to be 32 degrees. Right, we can just get that based on the fact that those two must add up to 180. Right? But now we can say, well, I know all three angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So I'm going to take my 76 and my 32, add them together. I'm going to get 108 degrees when I do that. And since these two sum up to 108, I can now take 180, subtract their sum, and that will give me that missing angle of 72 degrees again. Right? And it's kind of cool because it really verifies what we saw up here, which was that we can more quickly get that remote interior angle by taking the exterior and subtracting off this one, or we can just use the fact that the sum of the angles must be 180 to figure out that angle. It takes more steps though, which of course then possibly means you'll make more mistakes. Oh, we went all the way over our last slide. All right, so let's summarize, right? Exterior angles are a weird thing to begin with because when you have a figure, like a triangle or a rectangle or anything like that, typically the exterior angles simply aren't there. In order to actually produce one, we have to take a side of a figure and extend it kind of out into space. But once we do that, we can use the fact that we've got supplementary angles along a straight line to figure out the measures of exterior angles. We saw two primary things about exterior angles in this lesson. One, that when you add up all the exterior angles of a triangle, you get 360 degrees. The second one we saw was that any exterior angle will always be the sum of the two angles inside the triangle that aren't adjacent to it, that don't touch it. Those are called remote interior angles. Those could be used in a variety of different ways, and we'll see that a little bit in lessons in the future. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.